So diving right in, uh, as you can see, the game is fairly simple. There's only a few different character models to choose from, and uh, the graphics aren't anything to write home about. Uh, one thing that is nice is they let you customize your reticle in case you don't like the standard. Um, but let's go ahead and just dive in and see what the game is like. Uh, we're going to be playing on easy just for the sake of showing you all the weapons and things like that. Um, you can turn friendly fire on and off. You can play online as well. There aren't a whole lot of people playing, but uh, I haven't had any trouble finding matches if I, if I wanted to go join people. Uh, as far as I know, the online play only has co-op. There isn't a competitive mode. And before we go any further, the bad frame right here is because of fraps. The game itself actually runs quite smooth. Uh, the system requirements for it are incredibly low, and it, it should run pretty smoothly, even on, on old, outdated computers. Uh, I think it only requires about half a gig of RAM. Uh, so pretty much anything that you're going to be running will, will be able to play this well enough. Uh, so the game boasts uh, being a, a combination of real-time strategy and first-person shooter, although as you saw the building is fairly simple and honestly it reminds me a little bit more of a castle defense game than a proper real-time strategy. Um, that's not to say it's entirely a bad thing, I mean the game is a lot of fun even if it is rather simple. Um, sure, the first-person shooter aspect isn't up to par with modern first-person shooters like Call of Duty, and it's certainly not up to par with uh, modern real-time strategy games either, but it is nice to have that little bit of blend, even if it is rather dumbed down. Um, so as you can see, that section in the bottom center is my power. That builds up as you fight, um, killing enemies, destroying tanks, killing officers. Uh, and just over time you generate more. That's what you can use to build turrets and uh, upgrade your character. Um, you start out, as you can see, with the musket, pistol, knife, and wrench. Um, there's really not much point in using the knife or the pistol from what I've seen so far. And the musket, even though it is slow, uh, you really do feel like a badass using it because of how you reload. Um, it's kind of nice that in addition to building your different kinds of uh, turrets and the like, you can upgrade their effectiveness as well by putting more points into them. Uh, right here I was hurt, so I built a support station. That'll also refill my ammo as well, which is quite convenient with certain weapons. Um, so, in addition to building the turrets I already showed you, uh, the two gun turrets I put back there and the uh, anti-tank turret and the support station. You can also put in uh, fuel traps where basically it's just a, a big barrel of fuel you shoot it and it blows up. Uh, there's poison traps that take out infantry, uh, trip mine traps that uh, just blow up as soon as a tank or group of people walks across the, the wire. You can also rebuild your base in case it gets destroyed. Essentially, the enemies are trying to destroy your base which will drop your morale you can you want to kill enemy officers, which will destroy their morale, and uh, whoever's morale drops all the way down first uh, loses. So, of course, you don't have to wait for your base to get destroyed to rebuild it. You can repair your, any of your turrets or your base uh, with the wrench tool. There's a pretty wide variety of difficulty levels, which is nice. Uh, like I, I said, this is only playing on easy, which is why you can kind of putz around and not have to worry too much. But on the harder difficulties, it really can get pretty grueling. Um, if you go online, most of the games seem to be on the higher difficulties, because I suspect that the small following this game does have um, tends to be players that play quite a bit. Uh, the AI, however, is not very good at all. The enemies will just kind of just keep going through the same path over and over again, um, and you can usually figure out one little bottleneck where you can defend things. On some maps, they'll have you know two routes that they like to take, but for the most part, it's 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 pretty terrible pathfinding. Uh, the enemies really do just kind of pour forward. There's not much thought involved. Uh, they won't try to like flank you or anything. Uh, 
it's it's one more reason why it reminds me more of a castle defense game than a, a proper real-time strategy or a modern first-person shooter. No sound effects make a big difference for a lot of people on games, and this one won't really stand out. The sounds are functional, you won't uh, have your experience ruined by bad sounds, but they do all feel very generic. The guns don't sound terribly realistic, but they fit. Um, the music is much the same, it's just... It's decent background music, it doesn't really get you pumped or anything, it doesn't uh, really stand out, it's not terribly memorable. But it does the job, even if it's not incredible. Um, overall, the sound is much like the graphics, they're perhaps a bit subpar, but they don't really hurt the experience too much. And now I'm skipping ahead a little bit in the gameplay so you can see some of the different weapons. That's the shotgun in addition to the regular fire. Its secondary has a uh, incendiary fire. Uh, here is the weapon that you can only get by killing an officer. And it's just a really fast machine gun. Uh, you can't refill its ammo at a support station because that would just uh, make it too good. And you do lose it when you die. So uh, Here, obviously, your typical sniper rifle. It's pretty powerful considering if there's multiple people lined up you'll shoot all the way through them. Uh, this is a machine gun slash grenade launcher and I'm switching to a satchel charge just to blow up that officer in there. I killed a civilian which loses some power but that's okay. Um, again using the satchel charges they are one of the best ways to take down tanks and spider walkers or whatever you want to call them, things like that. Um, as you can see two there and that thing is dead, the biggest enemy in the game. Um, of course, you also have your typical rocket launcher. It's slow. Uh, you run slower with it. Flamethrower is pretty cool. You can actually lay down a little trail of fuel and then light it on fire. Right here, so you can see. Um, I haven't found much practical use for it, but it's kind of neat. Um, it's, it's a nice secondary fire. The game is available on Steam and different sites like it. The normal price tag is $10, but you can find it on sale from time to time. Um, I found it bundled with four other games for a total of $5. Even if I had paid full price, I think it would have been a fair amount considering uh, I expect to get about 20 hours out of the game, and so 50 cents an hour, that's not exactly a bad deal. When all said and done, the first person shooter aspects are a bit too simplistic, the real time strategies way too basic, and the graphics are a bit dated. The AI is nothing to be proud of, but if you look at it as a castle defense game, this is absolutely fantastic. If you look at it as a $10 bargain game, it's just a spectacular deal. I do suggest people go ahead and try this out, download the demo on Steam, uh, or if you are if you like what you've seen, just drop the 10 bucks on it. Um, it really is a lot of fun. Don't be uh, put off by the horrible reviews it's gotten elsewhere. It's really not a bad game by any stretch. Thanks for watching, everybody, and have a good one.